What's up guys, it's me, Kadar. And in this video, I'll be taking a look at the most complicated board game ever made. Since the boredom caused by the situation we're in was getting to me, I decided to read the dictionary of rules that was the campaign for North Africa, the most complicated board game ever made. Now without further ado, let's jump right into the video. There is a point where board games stop being fun and start being chores. There are quite a few board games like that, and due to their complexity, length, or tedium, it doesn't feel fun playing them. There is also a point where board games stop being a chore and turn into a spreadsheet simulator. The Campaign for North Africa is one of those games. Wikipedia calls the Campaign for North Africa an exceptionally detailed military simulation game, understatement of the century. You might as well join the army instead of playing that game if you want a realistic war simulation. The game has 1800 pieces, it usually takes upward of 1200 hours or 50 days straight to complete, and each turn takes 10 hours on average to finish. Even though there are two teams in the game, it's recommended for 5 players to be on each side. It's not like there are 10 players in the game because it was designed to accommodate 10 players. There are 10 players in the game because there's so much to manage. The general gist of the campaign for North Africa is that you play as a military commander on either the Allied or Axis powers, commanding and managing a vast variety of vehicles, artillery, aircraft, and engineers. You also have to manage your unit's ammunition, food, and water, and there are a bunch of rules to supplement that. But what makes the campaign for North Africa such a near unplayable and terrible game? I wasn't able to fully play the game as I had nobody to play it with, but I was able to read through the rules and they were a mess. The rulebook is 192 pages long, which actually at first glance isn't that bad. The Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition player's handbook is 293 pages long, and the Star Wars Edge of the Empire's rulebook is 497 pages long, so there are larger rulebooks in the Campaign for North Africa's. And out of those 192 pages in the Campaign for North Africa rulebook, only 76 of them are actually dedicated to the rules, with the rest being scenarios for the players to reenact. But here's the thing, most large rulebooks have a lot of fluff in them. Those large rulebooks have story bits explaining the backstory of the game and its setting. The Dungeons & Dragons core rules can be cut down to only 27 pages long, and Star Wars Edge of the Empire's core rules are only 42 pages long. The Campaign for North Africa's 76 pages of rules are just rules. No fluff, no backstory explanation, just rules. You can tell a game is going to be grueling if the first page you see is a warning. The very first page of the Campaign for North Africa's rulebook is meant to prepare you to read the rules. If a player needs to be given a warning to read the rules, then the rules of the game aren't even that good. The quick reference sheet is 34 inches long, and that's for quick reference. The board itself is a whole nother story. The game board, which is a map of North Africa, is 10 feet long. The rulebook also says on its first page that the rules aren't meant to be remembered. Yeah, the game explicitly states that the rulebook is going to be looked at often. Now, this wouldn't be bad if the rules were presented in a well-organized fashion, but nope. The rules are a jumbled mess. If I wanted to figure out how to place my units in specific positions to move an attack, I would have to slip past the glossary, movement, combat, and scouting rules before I got to the rules that are essential for the start of the game. Additionally, at one point a rule was cut off mid-sentence by several pages of tables and charts before being continued quite a few pages later. The rules are filled with so many inconsistencies. There are a bunch of rules that contradict themselves or have exceptions to them in certain scenarios, which makes reading the rulebook feel like reading a legal textbook instead of trying to understand the rules. For example, the formulas used in the game to calculate a group of soldiers' attack prowess 
is changed in the same paragraph. The initial formula for calculating how well a soldier attacks was equal to the number of soldiers multiplied by how well on average each soldier can fight divided by 10. It's a simple formula, but a couple of sentences later the formula is changed to the number of soldiers multiplied by how well each soldier fights plus 10. This might be a typo, but it causes a lot of confusion for the player. There are also some minor typos present, such as Axis being misspelled as Asus, Foul being misspelled as Four, and Tank being misspelled as Tang. These typos aren't game-breaking, but it reinforces the fact that the rulebook wasn't really reviewed properly. Also, certain revisions, adjustments, and additions to previous chapters and aspect of the game are actually not included in the chapters themselves, but are added at the end of the rulebook. So if a rule is outdated in the rulebook, it isn't until the very end that you realize that some of the rules you've been playing with are wrong or outdated. And by then, it's probably too late and the game, due to its complexity, is now in a state which is impossible to play in. There are also some strange and out of place rules in the game. There is an entire chapter dedicated to the mechanics of the German General Rommel and how he works. And there is also an entire chapter dedicated on how the Allies can capture and attack General Rommel. The weirdest part is that the success of the raid on Rommel varies based on who your in-game character is a relative to or is friends with. For example, the Axis team gets a benefit if they're friends with Eric Stroheim. A lot of the rules in the Campaign for North Africa try really hard to allow players to experience the role of being a commander in a war, but they fall flat on their face as the game is crazy complicated. To simulate the many different factors in war, players have to look up rules for terrain movement, storm locations, weather conditions, the shipment and usage of supplies, prisoners, vehicle quality, and so much more. The game introduces all of these out of place rules under the guise of trying to be realistic, when in actuality it introduces so many complex mechanics that don't add to the immersion of the game, but actually take it away as the player must then break the flow of gameplay by consulting the many tables in the rulebook. The final nail in the coffin for me in the Campaign for North Africa was its devotion to historical accuracy at the cost of having fun. The game had an interesting rule in which you could reorganize your forces in new ways to create new battalions, but this was immediately tarnished by the fact that there was a table showing the combinations that you could use, and you had to do what a commander in the war for North Africa would have done. The game proudly states how it allows for so many tactical decisions, only to restrict you on making decisions that the commanders of the time made to maintain historical accuracy. However, one rule to maintain this historical accuracy is beautiful. It's amazing. The designers were completely in their right mind when they made this rule. Its name is the Italian Pasta Rule. Let that sink in for a moment. The rule states that Italian troops require extra water rations to boil their pasta. If you don't, then the Italian troops will perform poorly in battle and might run away. Yeah, it's like the Italian army can't survive without pasta or something. What a rule. And that is why the Campaign for North Africa is an unplayable and pretty terrible game. And that is the hardest board game ever made. Now this game was crazy complicated, but in the next video I'll be taking a look at some free and much less complicated board games. If you're interested in getting your hands on an easy to learn combination of war games and trading card games, check out the Gladiator trading card game. A link to the shop page will be in the description down below. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.